Cannabis drinks, a report from Brightfield Group on U.S. cannabis distribution. Around the country, consumers are finding tea bags, low dose cannabis drinks, high dose shots, powered mixes, beverages, enhancers, shareable bottles, and more. All coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. I'm here in Seattle, home of Starbucks. We don't have ready-to-drink coffee. There's K-Cups, but, you know, I don't consider that coffee. So you can go to places like Portland, pick it up for 12, 15 bucks for a 12 ounce. And there's some options in California where I think Keef is from. Uh, it started in 2010 with Keef Cola in Colorado, and now available uh, in seven states and Puerto Rico. Interesting, they're down there. Probably taking advantage of Act 60 like everybody else should. I use a little CBG powder in my coffee every morning. Uh, that's one way of getting it. You can do a little squeeze thing. Um, if you haven't seen Voyager products, they have a device. If you're looking for something that's uh, accurate dosing uh, or just other waterless, flavorless you know, powders are out there as well. If that's what you're looking into, most of the beverages are hundred milligrams and they have, you know, the option to, to close it or whatever. Um, I think there's a lot of people who want smaller doses than that. Five, 10 milligrams. Probably I want more than hundred. I don't buy edibles because uh, I need more than hundred milligrams. So I'm not going to spend, you know, 10 cents a milligram. Um, I'd probably spend one cent a milligram. If there was a thousand milligrams in there for 10 bucks, I would do that. But hundred milligrams is dominating the edibles and drinks category. And then, uh, like I said, behind that is 10 milligrams and five milligrams. Lemon lemonade in terms of like um, drink flavors by distribution is, is uh, maybe one of the top flavors. I thought it was, um, you know, I thought it was closer to grape, but um Grape raspberry lemonade, all pro, uh, popular flavors by state. Um, you know, California loves their lemonade, Colorado, lemon and grape, Michigan, lemon and watermelon. I don't know if you've ever had a, a lavender soda, but that's pretty good. Um, they've got some of that in Washington state, um, uh, regular, not infused. Even as the COVID pandemic ripped through in 2020, the uh, cannabis beverages were estimated at 799 million for global sales. It's going to be a $2 billion market by 2026 with a kegger of almost 17%. Non-alcoholic cannabis beverages are dominating the market and are also expected to register a strong growth, mainly supported by growing demand from female and new customers, especially millennials. Also rising interest in wellness drinks among consumers with cannabis infused alcoholic beverages, gaining some popularity, probably more hype than anything, and offering um, of that alcohol effect. Like if you see Tilray jumping into this whole thing, I, I don't think there's a demand for that at all, uh, but I, maybe I'm wrong, we'll find out. So as you can see from this graph, that sales of cannabis infused beverages were up 40% last year, according to MJ Business Daily. Uh, a lot of people trying to capitalize on some new markets, uh, probably CBD and CBG drinks as well. So we're seeing some strong growth from convenience and people wanting to try new things, especially on the weekend, but remaining a small portion of the overall cannabis mix. So the market share of cannabis beverages roughly steady over the last three years, holding right around 1% of annual shares in 2018, 2019, 2020, um, trying to make a trend last year in 2021 um, at a 1.2% stake for the year. But uh, not really going to pop. I think it's because the prices are too high. You got 100 milligrams at 15 bucks. People are probably going to go to flour uh, before they do that. It's just kind of my guess. Um, average prices on the wholesale level for beverages, $8.58 for a single serving. And so wholesale prices for infused beverages on LeafLink fluctuated from a high of 875 in April down to 759 in June. Beverages are approachable. People know what to do. It's not like a dab where they need a ritual or a, you know, some kind of device, but there is a health-minded individuals. You go into a store and it's all chocolate edibles, all sugary beverages. So you have some health conscious minded folks, um, but you there's nowhere to go. So fortunately, there's not a whole lot of options in that category. It's a lot like um, a handy mark, just sugar, alcohol, wheat, dairy, just 
all these inflammatories that I try to stay away from personally. Uh, but I do like my THC. So there needs to be uh, more options out there for, for all of us. We've also talked a lot on the podcast. We did an edibles um, podcast back in 2018 when uh, you know nano was just starting to become a thing. So uh, nano emulsification is supposed to reduce the uh, time that it takes for uh, that onset. So with a more rapid onset, you're supposed to not have that quintessential uh, overdose, you know, when you eat it. And then 20 minutes later, you're like, that didn't work. I'm going to try another one. And then psh, your night's just ruined or whatever. So uh, more accurate dosing, more of a rapid onset, more of a um, set of expectations. A lot of people who don't use cannabis because they don't know how the equivalent of the wine or tequila or, you know, beer is going to affect them. And so they just kind of stay away from it altogether. It's not going to take long for that catch to catch up. We saw that um, 4.6 billion out of Constellation Brands or, um, you know, all the other big flying uh, people coming out. Trust Beverage joint venture between Hexo and Molson Coors in August of 2020. That's going to be one. Uh, and so many other ones from uh, Tilray coming down, trying to work with Budweiser and then uh, Whiskey Company. I mean, they're just, they don't know what they're doing. They're just going to fail. Um, but there's money involved. And so eventually they're going to figure out, oh, people just want infused coffee. Maybe we should focus on that. <laughs> so until we have like infused coffee, um, the reason why we don't is because you can just look at uh, how it's done in the everyday world between, you know, Pepsi or Coca-Cola, regional bottling, bottling facilities is way too expensive to have 50 redundancies. It's easier to have two or three in a region. East Coast, Central, West Coast, whatever it is, you're not going to have 50. So that's why it's not a thing. That's why it's really small batches. Um, and the popularity and everything else will come with economies of scale as soon as they can produce nationally with regional bottling facilities and produce at economies of scale. Uh, that you're not going to have infused beverage brands really take off. I'm not going to go and buy Keef. I don't care who they are, or what they are. Um, 100 milligrams at 10 cents a milligram is I'm not paying for it. So uh, they need to do something else. And in my opinion, it's not going to happen until we have federal legalization. What do you guys think? With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. And check out these other videos that we've got.